Anyways, we're about two minutes after. I don't want to take up with entirely too much. Uh, like I want to be more on the on the ball here than not. But I do want to just welcome everyone that is joining us, whether you're joining us live or you're going to be watching this at a future date and time, that this is our first Startup Grind event here in Market, Michigan. And we're super excited to be part of the Startup Grind community, uh, to add value and to just make uh, strategic connections and really, at the end of the day, connect with people on a more personal, human-to-human -human basis and eventually make friends out of the whole deal and you know learn from one another that's what all this is all about is to learn from one another to uh impart knowledge and wisdom and just kind of uh um kind of showcase to the world and promote what we're is that we're doing all around and how we can kind of push innovation moving forward so with that being said thank you matt landers who is the principal uh, owner and founder of at tactics which is a cybersecurity company mostly doing uh penetration testing and it infrastructure testing to make sure that companies and organizations have solid cybersecurity protocols in in case there is a breach so matt thank you so much for being with us today and i'm really excited to hear about you, uh learn about what is it you do and a little bit about your story and i know that you have some extensive background in working with uh, big companies and being an ethical hacker for over the last 20 years. So Matt, can you just tell me and uh, a little bit about people about cybersecurity, what it means to be an ethical hacker? Well, uh, thanks for having me on here. And um, I don't know, I, I really think it's about a mindset. You know, it's more about being curious. Um, you can't possibly know everything. And you mentioned earlier about how no two days are the same. And I think that's what makes being an eth eth ethical hacker kind of uh, great because no two days are the same. You're always learning something different. Mm -hmm. And um, I, I think that that really, there, there, there's a definitely a certain person that wants that. There's some people that just like to have everything the same every day. I'm just not that, you know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, so it's interesting because like in your background, you've worked with some pretty big companies doing some really amazing stuff. Uh, can you just give us a little bit of background on some of the fun projects you enjoy doing and you're kind of hoping that, you know, maybe those companies would invite you back. Obviously, it, uh, if, if they made you sign a, uh, a disclosure statement, you can't disclose what you did, but tell us as, as much as you, as you can, please. Yeah. Um, yeah. Most, most of everything is wrapped in bubble tape of non-disclosure agreements, you know, um, yeah. <laughs> but uh, you know, there, there, there are a few fun things. Uh, to, to be honest, most of my fun projects were personal projects. Um, you know, I, I, I did, you know, a little bit of work with uh, the Facebook and uh, Netflix and things like that. And those were cool projects. But the ones that I found really interesting where I just found a device and mm -hmm. learned all about it. And, you know, yeah. um, uh, I'd say ubiquity products were probably some of the more fun ones to test. Uh, I wouldn't say that they were the easiest company to work with. Mm -hmm. as far as as far as uh having a good turnaround of, of patch time but yeah. eventually everything got patched you know yep um but uh, you know i i think that some of the more fun projects are some some of my personal ones i not under a deadline then you know i i can look at something for months on end you know yeah and, and plus it's kind of it's a continuation right so you get to you get to kind of putz around in there and have a good time. Like, you know, just you, you really are getting in the weeds with something like in, intricacies and details. And you're like, I can probably just do this for the next several months and no one is rushing me. Right. Like you yeah. can. Well, that, that, that is the interesting thing about um, trying to find flaws and vulnerabilities. That's, that, that's what I find most fun. And I realize that that's not the entirety of cybersecurity, but it is fun to find something that nobody else has found before. Mm -hmm. And uh, um, yeah, it, it could be 10 minutes or it could be 10 months. You, some, sometimes you really have to deep dive and you don't have time for it. So, yeah, yeah. It's like, like you said, but it's almost like bragging rights. Like, ha, I'm the first to figure out X or whatever right. X is. Right. And well, and that's also kind of interesting too, because if you start getting a reputation of being the first person to figure things out like that, people are going to seek you out. Right. I mean, they're mm -hmm. like, 
you did something that no one else prior has done before. Or and and, and some sometimes that's just because nobody spent the time. And I, hmm. I feel like that that's a big part portion of it. Um, there there's so many different lines of code, pieces of software devices out there. Yeah. That you know, nobody has the time to go over every single thing. And that's why we have been securities and flaws. Or, you know, more more so, I, I'm just gonna go on a rant here. Go ahead. <laughs> more, more so, it's because when things are developed, they're kind of used in a Lego fashion and patched piece of code together and how it works, put it into production. You know, and that, that seems to be more of why we have security flaws. Uh, so kind of like the motto, done is better than perfect, right? right. So they, you know, engineers or whoever the uh, company is, they put it together. And like, All right, well, you know, we've been promising our community or our customers or our end users for months and they're getting impatient. So just send it on out. Right. Yep. Yeah. Yep. That's, that's, that's pretty much the uh, norm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's good to know that like, you know, especially, you know, for, for startup grind and this being a community of entrepreneurs and, and, and founders of startups that you don't have to have everything in place to get it going. You right. just got to get it going. Exactly. And, and, yeah. to, and to know that that's reassuring that, you know, these big companies, you know, these companies that have like just troughs of money and investment and they're putting out things that, you, like you said, they, they're not entirely um, from a cybersecurity standpoint, uh, all buttoned up. And that's why you know, there is there's potential for, uh, you know, nefarious activities with people that are coming in and trying to do uh, some shady, uh, some shady things. Right. That's very true. So I was going to ask, like, so obviously you've been doing it for a long time, 20 years of, you know, uh, you know, hacking and, and technology. Um, but when did you find like you found out like you had the passion for it? Like, was this like in your teenage years or like even before that, when you're a kid trying to put stuff together? How did that come about? Well, I, I think, uh, you know, I'm going to date myself a bit. But yeah, um, as soon as I was on an IBM PS2 or a Commodore 64 or something like that. You know, it was, I was pretty much done after that. Um, mm-hmm. You know, back then, I, I think it was a method that I used to kind of control what was going on in my life at the, at the time. Um, but since then, it was kind of like, well, I'm kind of good at this. Maybe I should just go down this path, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah, it, it's it's been pretty interesting. It, it, it was in my teen years. Um, and, you know, back then in the, like, 90s, um, there, there, there weren't a lot of legal outlets for people to practice this kind of stuff. Um, <laughs> so I, I'm, that's why another reason why I'm really excited to be working with uh, UPCI in my off time um, to be able to kind of help kids that were my age. And that I, I didn't really have the, those opportunities, you know, yeah. to, to express that, that kind of outlet when I was a kid. So um, yeah. it, it's, it's, it's nice and uh, it's fun. Also, because I mean, to, to teach something, you really have to know it. Absolutely. And you only know when you really teach, like mm-hmm. when you're breaking down a subject matter that for the rest of us, for the most part, can be a complex thing. And if you can break it down in simple terms where yes. someone can it's, understand it. It's not easy. And there's a lot of, you know, geek speak, right? Or tech jargon in the industry where... And then you as a person that has to be an effective communicator, not only for the students you teach, but for your clients. Mm-hmm. So how do you, how do you bridge, how do you bridge that gap? Well, I mean, I probably, I probably won't be the most, uh, um, I don't know how to say this. I, I, <laughs> I probably won't be the most popular person to, to say this, but there, in, in the security industry, there's like a new product every week, you know, and a new flashy thing, um, a new, uh, acronym or we must use MITRE framework or we must use X product or least privilege or whatever the new shiny thing is that week. You know, it's mm-hmm. uh, the client doesn't care about that stuff. Mm-hmm. They just don't, you know, and you, you have to be able to speak to them in a way that they can understand you. Um, they're, 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 I, I understand that in the security world, you have to stand out. Yeah. And so that's why a lot of uh, marketing folk, will um, kind of use those flash terms and whatever the next one is next week, they can use that and then maybe it'll make them stand out. But at the end of the day, the client doesn't care about that stuff. Mm -hmm. They just want to be secure. So it's very important to be able to communicate 
to them on a level that they can understand you. Um, it's it's the same way when you're trying to teach somebody something at a base level. Yeah, yeah. It's it's clear communication, right? And do can you deliver the result the client is looking for? Because essentially, right. that that's what they're paying you for. It's like exactly. Listen, all that thing, great, but like, how do I make sure that my company, you know, hardware when, that holds our accounting or holds our invoicing system doesn't get, you know, breached because we have all of our client corporate credit cards on file there, right? Right. And so, so that's cool. Um, I was going to ask, like, I've, obviously you like to teach and you like to, uh, you do a lot of uh, tremendous amount of work at the Upper, uh, Upper Peninsula Cyber Security Institute. Uh, what what do you see from the students when it comes to engagement and the uh, current interest into the cybersecurity field? Um, you know, I, I I think it is one of those niche fields that you know there. I think a lot of people start off with a lot of interest, and then you weed down into the people that are actually interested in it. Kind mm-hmm. of you know, there, there's a lot of fields like that, um, and and I know that there's a big uh, cybersecurity skills gap as as being said a lot. But, and I think that more so, um, it really needs to be hammered home that uh, people hiring need to know what they're looking for. Mm-hmm. You know, and uh, we, we, we've seen that time and time, time again where it's, uh, you know, it's like, well, we need an a intern with five years of experience, you know, th- 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 things like that. And it's just, um, as far as interest at the PCI, you know, um, they are kind of just getting going. You know, um, we've seen, you know, a, f- a few success stories come out of there. And that's really mm-hmm. exciting. Um, trying to get people interested in nerd things isn't always easy, but we're, we're, we're definitely trying. Yeah, absolutely. It's kind of interesting, too, like how you said you wean them out. How, how does that work? Is it? when you put them on a project or is it like early in the, in the process? How does that go about? You know, I, I think that's like with any kind of business, you know, people either shine or they don't and they, they kind of uh, select themselves or they, or they don't, mm-hmm. you know, um, if, if you put somebody on a project and, and they kind of flounder on it, they're not excited. You actually have to love this stuff. And I, I've said that to many people, you know, you, you have to be excited about it. You have to be into it. If you're not, it's going to show. And, and that's okay. It's just not for you. Um, mm-hmm. But this is such an evolving industry. Tomorrow, it's going to be completely different, as well as the next day. And so you actually have to love it yet to be able to stay in it and stay relevant. Yeah, that's cool. Because we, I mean, we met when you were doing, you're a subcontract for an IT company here in Marquette, Michigan. Mm-hmm. And so that's how our relationship kind of from a yeah. professional standpoint came about. And uh, in, in that time frame, you know, some of the people that you've taught or you instructed from the Institute have come to work with us or like in proximity of what we do here. Mm-hmm. And some of them are really top notch individuals. Like yeah. <laughs> it's amazing when you tell them to do something and it's like within three seconds, it's like done. And it's like, did you hack my brain because you did what I was thinking about doing before I even told you to do it? Yeah. And, and I think I know who it's exactly who you're talking about, but yeah, um, there, there, there's some people that, like I said, they're, they just love this stuff and they're in it and, and, you, and you can tell and that, that shows. And I think that's why it is a lot more important for um, people hiring for cybersecurity roles to look at projects that they're involved in. Just, you know, that, that's what, what people care about. It's the projects you're involved in. What are you working on now? And I think there's somebody else that said this that I'm going to repeat. Um, is that if somebody asks you what are you working on, you can never say nothing. You know, you always have to have some kind of project you're working on, whether it's personal or work related or whatever. Whatever. But if if you actually love the industry that you're in, you should always be working on some kind of project to better yourself. Yeah. The hardest thing, if, if you haven't spoke to someone in a very long time and you ask them how they've been and they tell you same old, same old, you, you kind of want to run away from that person uh, respectfully. Right. Oh, <laughs> well, well, yeah. You know, <laughs> yeah. Because like you said, if you're not evolving with what you're doing, then 
Um, it's only a matter before you're going to be extinct in your industry, right? Mm -hmm. uh, your skill gap is going to get greater and greater and greater to the point where no, no corporation or company or non-for-profit or whatever you're trying to accomplish will hire you because the skills are not, not there. So going off that, what resources do you kind of plug? I don't know, this might be a little bit of giving away your competitive advantage, but what resources or uh, credentialed um, institutions or magazines or periodicals do you kind of tap into to kind of see what's going on uh, in, in the cybersecurity world? Um, it's, it's kind of funny. Um... I mean, so I, I do have a few uh, private groups that I belong to on like uh, Discord or um, a few, few other type of things like that, where we kind of like throw different things that are happening in the industry at each other and get get comment. Um, but there's a lot of uh, security news on Twitter. Un yeah, unfortunately, that's just where it's at. Um, so, and then there's a lot of junk too. So you kind of have to weed through that. Um, but you know it. And really, I think for, for me on a personal development level, just trying to hone my skills and everything like that, it's uh, um, just keeping on top of certain names and different people that are constantly coming out with new innovative ideas, looking at their GitHub code, you know, stuff like that. Um, there, you, you, again, you can't possibly know everything in this industry and people who say they do are probably lying, you know, <laughs> but I mean, that, that that's why it's really important to build up um, a big group of people that you trust and that you can bounce ideas off of um, because you're all probably working on different projects or maybe even if it's the same project, they have a different take. It, it's, it really is good to have a, a, a community in that aspect. And I think that that's the only way that you can get better. Yeah, the the old uh, the old saying of iron iron sharpens iron, right? You got right. Too many, you got enough people coming in together, and they're working like you said alongside of each other, parallel, and uh, you know there's that cross pollination of ideas and uh, that synergy, that learning that happens, where you just get different perspective on stuff, fresher perspective, and it turns out to be um, turns out to be a, a win win. So that's yeah. super cool. Um, now, like for your company specifically at Tactics, um, you do pen testing or pen, it's, short, it's short for penetration testing. So uh, what does a pen tester do and, uh, and what does that process kind of, you know, base, in basic process look like? Right. So, you know, essentially what that would be called is, is you know, somebody trying to uh, test the security of, of an existing security system. Um, Mm. That, you know, so that would be like red, red team versus blue team type of things. Um, but I, I, I like to take it a little bit further. I like to look at the whole picture. Um, and I, I do use some automated things, but most of it's by hand, you know, and I have a few other trusted people that I bring in sometimes. Um, but yeah, it, it's, it's more about keeping people secure as opposed to some red team companies or penetration testing companies. They just come in and they say, Oh, well, we got into the, the domain controller, pay us money. You know, it, it really, it doesn't fix the, the overall problem that you have all these other problems all over the place. And, you know, it's, it's not really helpful. So I, I really try to um, dive deeper into the bigger problem and work with training and everything like that, because you, you can help people to fix all, the, all their holes, but if they keep acting in the same way, it's just going to happen again. Yeah. So when you mentioned like red team, blue team, a red team is someone that an external team that comes in and finds more uh, breach points and endpoints. Right. Like, okay. And what's a blue team do? So the, 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 the blue time team is actually, you know, somebody on a seam or a log or something like that, or they're, they're, they're setting up firewalls or they're monitoring firewall logs. Um, it's, it's, it's an attack sim simulation, you know, and then the, the, the blue team tries to see if they can find out what's happening on the other side through logs. Interesting. <laughs> it's essentially, I'm, I'm dumbing it down a lot. <laughs> I, I, I appreciate that. It's <laughs> <laughs> fine. So, um, but yeah, so I mean, it's, it's, uh, it's, I, 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 I kind of like to, uh, um, take, to take a look at devices that nobody has found anything wrong with and 
kind of uh, find all the holes that people missed. It's it's not always that that hard either, which is scary. Interesting. So things that we use every day as the end user consumers that could have potentially sensitive personal information of ours that um, a cyber a cyber criminal can take and sell or they use it as some kind of extortionary tools. Um, and I think I think it's an important thing. Like a lot, of we I, I use the term hacker. And then I think a lot of people use the term hacker for a cyber secure or a cyber criminal. Like they use it interchangeably. Would you agree with that? Or that? Um, you know, I, I, I don't, are you asking if I think that, that the word um, hacker is a bad thing? Yeah. It sometimes gives um, a negative connotation to it. Like that guy's yeah. a hacker or. Yeah. Well, I, I mean, to, to be honest, most of the people who are really into this field, they probably don't use the word cyber at all. Um, and it just it gets used a lot or, or the word hacker at all, you mm -hmm. know, it's, it's just more marketing things, whatever. I, I, I kind of think that, that the word hacker shouldn't be a bad thing. It just means it's somebody who's curious. Mm -hmm. Um, but most people don't, who are really into this industry, don't even think about that kind of stuff, but you know, <laughs> They're, they're just doing their job. I just want to make sure your security is up and yep. running and, yep. and that's it. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, I mean, lately, you know, we had the uh, colonial pipeline that was all over the news that got hacked, uh, you know, that was fell victim to, uh, uh, you know, uh, some kind of cyber crime. And then that big uh, meat packaging plant. Uh, so what is your take on that? Cause the style of, of, of attack was ransomware, correct? Mm -hmm. And, and so what can you break it like a little bit about what is ransomware and what are some things that, you know, an individual or an organization can do to, uh, to protect themselves. Right. Um, so that, I guess when, when people classify different types of malware, whatever you want to call it, um, it's, it's the end result, right? And the, the, the end result was that all their files were encrypted. Therefore it's ransomware and they're asking for something. Um, that's not how they get in, you know, they got in through, was it RDP or bad passwords or something, you know, leaked, leaked passwords. Um, you know, the, the ransomware is, is the end effect. What is the real problem? The real problem is that they got in in the first place, you know, um, the, uh, the, what was it the CISA, the, um, yeah, what was that? The. Cybersecurity and Infrastructure Security Agency. They came out with a ransomware guide. I'll just post that in the chat there. Um, okay. And 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 that that um, they, I think there's a guide in there, which I actually found pretty informative for companies that really don't know a whole lot. Um, there was a ransomware campaign toolkit. A few other good good links in there for people to check out. Um, but in, in in the end of the day, it's you know. You have these bigger companies, and it is very easy for a bigger company like that to lose track of their assets. Um, I, I really believe that and to start any kind of security hygiene endeavor to uh, try to plug your holes, find out where your weak points are, you actually have to know what you have in the first place. And a lot of these companies, you know, there could be some gadget in the in the closet that's connected to Wi-Fi or something that, that somebody just put in there to make their job easier for that day. And then they forgot about it. It's, it's easy for that to happen. Um, you can have policies all day long, but that doesn't stop somebody from doing that. Interesting. So, so sometimes it's just human sheer laziness of someone that said, eh, that's good enough, you know, put a band like it, on it, it. It could be that, or it could be, you know, they, they didn't want to wait for somebody to fix their problem or, who, who knows? It could be a myriad of things. Hmm. Interesting. So like for your company right now with Ad Tactics, obviously it's, you're in the startup phase and you're, you're still, you're gaining a lot of steam, you know, you're mm -hmm. working with different universities, right? Mm -hmm. And so for you personally, what, what type of uh, clients or individuals are you looking to work with specifically? Um, I'm excited to work with anybody that actually cares about their security. You know, um, I, I, you know, it, we we kind of live in this world in the security industry where where uh, 
people are very reactive and I'm excited to work with people who are proactive um, because um, it, it seems like a lot of people don't do anything unless they're made to, or they have to reach X certification or they have to become X compliant. Um, and that doesn't make you secure. It just means you checked off a box. But so I'm really excited to work with companies that are serious about securing their, their, their network and their employees and everything. Um, specifically, um, I, I like working with IOT devices and in, in, in the medical industry and things like that. Um, that, that's great stuff. It's just fun, but I'm, I'm not really limiting myself to that. I, I'm really just, you know, and, and you had mentioned earlier about, um, giving away some of my, uh, um, edge or something like that, but I really, I, I just, I just really, uh, I really get excited about people and companies who want to be secure in the first place because eventually it, it kind of rolls down downhill you know if one 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 company has a problem and then they have they're a vendor of another company and it's just terrible but yeah yeah that's <laughs> like the that's like the gateway portal for everything else right right this is the main gatekeeper and if you get past that main ge- gatekeeper then you can go any type of direction <laughs> it's, and- it's it's the the, the uh, path of least at least resistance you know and if, if I were an adversary, I'd definitely go with the path of least resistance. And a, a lot of times that's through third party vendors or code or whatever. Interesting. Yeah. And, you know, path of least resistance, that's like more of a, that's more of a human thing. Mm-hmm. You know, we, <laughs> human beings want to get the most amount of gain for the least amount of work. And if we can right. find, if we can find a way to do that and, and, you know, bad people, obviously they exploit it. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> And they and they do it for their own personal um, fi- financial gain. And do you think some of these hackers, these, these these criminals, you know, these people that use it to to you know try to you know extort money out of other companies, do you do it? Do you think they do it because they're the financial reward, or they kind of do it for the the thrill, the hunt, the the uh, hey, let's see if I can hack this company, and here I go trying to check it out, you know. Well, it, it's, it seems like a lot of the uh, ones that are involved with ransomware, I wouldn't even call them really hackers because uh, some of them are just downloading or buying a kit, you know, and it's they're, they're just running it and seeing where they can get with it. Um, uh, yeah, I, I, I think it's mostly financial related with that kind of stuff. Um, but, you know, I mean, I who, who knows? You know, <laughs> all... <laughs> All that I really care about is that if, as, as long as we can secure that and help help people from having that happen in the first place. Um, but yeah, I, I, I you know, I I love to to to, to find problems and in, in flaws and in different devices and everything like that. But that's just because I'm inquisitive. But it doesn't mean that uh, someone else can't be. I don't know. <laughs> that's kind of a roundabout answer, I guess. Yeah, I mean, especially with everything being like the high majority of things connected to the internet, right? Wi Fi or Bluetooth or mm-hmm. anything else. I mean, everything is electronically attached some way, shape, or form. You know, it's, I guess, if like you don't want to be tracked or you don't want a hacker to get any of your things, don't use technology ever. <laughs> right. You know, uh, you know, I'm, I'd be pretty fine if we just went, went back to typewriters, but we're not going to do that. So here we are. <laughs> Morse code as a, a form of comms, you know. <laughs> right, you know. No, you know. I mean, it, it's it's one of those things where you, you you know that it's difficult for clients and businesses to navigate this world in the security industry and everything like that. And every, everybody just wants to get back to work. They just want to do their job and not have to worry about this stuff. Um, and and I know that it is hard for them to differentiate which company is going to help them out in that field you know and so i think just just being able to speak plainly in 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 words that they can understand and not try to do the whole wow factor or the fear factor thing some sometimes you do have to like just say exactly what the problem is and it, sometimes that is scary but that, that is a, a a tactic that that's used a lot in this industry is the whole fear tactic unfortunately sometimes that needs to happen just so people take it seriously yeah, you, not to sugarcoat anything, but if you don't do this, here might be. This is the ramifications of you not taking action. We right. mentioned 
proactive versus reactive where most companies or people like, well, well now you got to help me get my information back. Cause someone stole it, blah, blah, blah. And you're like, I, I know, but we, there was measures that we could have done 12, 13 months ago that could have helped prevent all this. So do you find sometimes if you're having conversations of, you know, in that realm with cybersecurity and like people hiring you out that a trust is like a big proponent of, you know, someone saying, Hey, Matt, like, I would like to hire like tactics to come, you know, check out my cybersecurity or, you know, my IT infrastructure. Do you feel like sometimes it might be a little bit of, um, uh, does it take a while for you to gain some people's trust for oh, them yeah. to allow you to work with them? Yeah. And, 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 and that's a good thing. Hmm. You know, I mean, you shouldn't just let anybody, I mean, well, the, the thing is, is that no one really has to let anybody attack your network. People are already doing it anyways, you know, <laughs> you know, <laughs> but yes, I mean, but, but that's what uh, non, non disclosure agreements and all the agreements are for and a scope policy to make sure that you can touch this, but not that. Etc. Um, but yeah, I, I, there is some trust issues here. Um, but th I think that that's a good thing. Um, the only thing that I can really say to that is that um, there, there, if once once you, you you talk to a client, you have to actually um, explain to them why it's important and uh, whether they go with you or not. I just hope that they do something instead of nothing. Yeah, that's that's a really good point. It's like the whole person is like, well, whether you buy insurance for me or not, you know, if you're selling insurance at that particular time, which kind, you kind of are. I mean, this is your insurance policy that, that this not this is not going to happen. And if it does, here's what we can do to back it up. Right. Uh, and it's nice to like let people know, like if you're doing it, whether you get it from me or somebody, mm -hmm. make sure you are because there's people that are already trying to get in into your system and. Right and do bad things. So there, there is a lot of people that view like antivirus or this new product or that product as their insurance policy. Um, and, and, you know, it's good to have something like that or some kind of um, um, some, some kind of a system in place to check for known vulnerabilities or known viruses against the database of things like that. Um, it doesn't really help against something that comes out that day. So is, you know, and, and then, then then you'll have somebody that comes out with a product that says, we check against those things. And, you know, it's just a continual, continual thing. <laughs> so cybersecurity experts are, mar are getting connected with marketers and they're really getting out their names when it comes to some of this stuff. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, it, it's it's fine. I, I Like I said, as long as they're doing something, it's better than nothing. Um, but... I, I, I say it a lot, you know, it's, it's like, if you want to protect yourself against people who run scanners, then run a vulnerability scanner and maybe you can protect yourself against some of the same things that the scanner might find. But if you want to protect yourself against a hacker, you should probably hire a hacker because they don't go off of a, a database of matching things, you know? Yeah, that's cool. Uh, so what if someone is wanting to get into the cybersecurity, you know, field, mm -hmm. uh, you know, like, let's say, you know, I, you know, I'm a 20, 22 year old kid that's, you know, maybe had a little bit of college under my belt or thinking about going to school for that or trying to maybe sign up for some kind of cybersecurity course to learn more about it. Where does someone like that start? Well, I, I know starting just like anything in any field is hard. It's daunting. Um, once you start, it's easier. So you just have to start. It doesn't matter what it is, you know, um, especially with the, the, with the cybersecurity world, it does seem daunting and it's hard to start because you're afraid of, oh, what if I do something wrong? I might break something or I might get in trouble or et cetera. Um, there, there are a lot of resources out right now um, where you can test your skills on, and it's legal and things like that. Um, I, I would really recommend, no matter what age group, learning some scripting language like Python or Go or something like that, learning Bash or um, PowerShell, you know, just learning some things like that that'll help you out a lot in that industry. Um, beyond that, learning the actual day to day skills of doing uh, cybersecurity type offensive operations, you know, they're 
all you have to do is hit Google. There's tons of stuff out there. Um, but um, yeah, there's a lot of resources out there. It's not too hard to find. And then as you get going, you'll find out your kind of your niche, right? Like, yes. Yeah. I mean, you know, there, there are things that you will not be interested in and that's fine. Find something you are interested in and just go with it forever until you get bored with that and then move on to something else. <laughs> yeah. That's, that's good because like, you know, we, we have some people here that are like looking at getting, you know, into the cybersecurity field. And I was asking these, some of these questions today to one of them. It was their first mm-hmm. day here. We have them for three months to work out of our space. And I'm like, well, what, well, what type of cybersecurity are you interested in? Like, well, I'm, and it was just a, and I obviously, I guess that from my ignorance, that was a really loaded question. <laughs> it, it is, it is, but that's okay. I mean, um, and, and if they don't really know, then that, that's when you just throw everything at them and see what, 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 what sticks. Yeah. You know, um, and, and, and I'll probably uh, send them an email, a few things that I think that might be fun for them to work on. And if they don't like that, then it'll show. True, true. Well, and you'll see what they like, like working on and you get more of that and kind of right. push away this, to the, the, the junk that they don't want to work on. Right. Mm-hmm. So for you, for you and your company, Matt, like, like obviously uh, for startups and people getting into business for themselves and, you know, a lot of people are so fixated on, you know, I got to get my product together. I got to get my service up and running and then I got to go market it. Right. Um, but they never really, sometimes they, they, purchase a piece of software or hardware and like, well, I think that's security enough. Mm-hmm. So um, how do p- those companies, like how do they get in contact with someone like you that you can like, even just from a consultative standpoint, say, Hey, that's all great for your startup. Mm-hmm. But w- if you scale and you're planning on growing this thing, here's some of the security um, protocols and preventive measures you should put in place. Yeah. Well, it's, it's pretty easy. You know, um, either uh, send up my, email and the chat there. I don't know anybody, but I mean, and, and anybody can get a hold of me at any time really. Um, and I'm, I'm really easy going about getting with people and talking about their environment. If the non-disclosure agreements will allow for um, and everything and just setting up a plan, you know, you, you have to start somewhere. And, and as I was saying before, ha- having a network inventory or a device inventory is a great start. Um, then at least you know what you, what you have. You can't secure anything if you don't know what you have. Good point. And being that you know, Star Grind is a big global mm-hmm. community. I would. What are the what are the rules and regulations when it comes to like international um, cybersecurity laws? Because obviously we live here in the United States, but how does like the U.S. government tackle you know, service security differently than maybe someone, you know, on the other side of the world, say New Zealand or Australia? Uh, that's a good question. And especially when you're dealing with, with, you know, you mentioned ransomware before and stuff like that. Um, it is about jur- jur- jurisdiction, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, most every hack out there is crossing some kind of border or state lines or, or country lines or something, you know. So there's probably a lot of, uh, lot of red tape and a lot of paperwork. Which I'm sure you love. I love paperwork so much. <laughs> <laughs> um, so that, 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 that being said, I'm, I'm developing a portal for my clients on my website where they can actually see the, 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 the whole process of a pen test and doing different network and, and mobile app testing and whatever uh, on that portal so they can kind of see the progress of it. Um, they can check off different things that they've fixed or, and want me to retest or things like that just trying to make it easier for everybody. So it's not just a document file that somebody gets sent. It's not very interactive. People like to see graphs and whatnot, you know. And there's something satisfying of watching like the progress bar creep forward, right? You're at 50%. As long as it's not like a Microsoft one, you know, where it's like 90%, five hours later, 10%, you know. <laughs> It's like, like when you're stuck in traffic, like I got closer to my destination, but time-wise, I'm still further away. Right, right. You know, when you live in a big <laughs> metropolitan area, you know, Chicago, New York, LA, it's like, um, I'm driving towards downtown and I'm moving closer to it. But then the sign says I'm actually 30 more minutes away from it. <laughs> I know. How does that work? I'm, I'm, I'm glad I don't live there right now, but... 
Yeah. And, and that's another thing too, is like with like COVID, you know, everyone working from home, I mean, and, and companies allowing their employees to take their devices and work from home. Have, have you seen an uptick or maybe some kind of trend with uh, um, lack of security or people being more loose with emails or giving out emails and, you know, uh, phishing emails happening? Mm-hmm. Yeah, they're, 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 well, with, with everything being more lax, uh, it's, it's bad security all over the place. Um, the, the whole uh, bring bring your own device thing in, inside of the workplace is, was a good start with the, that kind of badness. And now with the people at home, it's that much greater um, <laughs> for me. <laughs> But yeah, I mean, you know, I I think that um, as far as examples go, um, I think that that the, the fishing will always be one of the main ways that people get in, um, whether they're at home or not. Uh, but then again, you you just have people running scanners all day long. So, so what would you recommend, Matt, for like phishing emails? Just don't click on it. That's it. Or? Well, I mean, it, it, it just, you need to have some kind of training program in your company. If you don't have a training program, then you just have no idea what, what, what your employees are doing. Even then you probably don't know what your employees are doing. You know, it's a, uh, the only thing you can do is just try to educate, make sure that your employees feel empowered enough to say something. If they're not quite sure about something, that's kind of a big deal. Uh, there's quite a few companies where I, you know, employees don't feel empowered enough to say something. Um, and that, that, that's a big deal. Um, so they almost feel afraid not to click on it and afraid to click on it. And that's a bad situation to be in. Yeah. So as companies or, you know, individuals who are co-founders or founders of startups and they're onboarding, you know, personnel and, you know, Mm co-founders or a team of people to help, you know, push their, you know, endeavor forward, uh, having brutal honesty and encouragement of, Hey, you know, ask questions and, let these people know and educate them on, on this stuff because you, you honestly don't know. Yeah. Um, well, and, 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 and it's, you know, you also, a lot of these companies have people working in different countries and different places, you know, they're, they're not all in the same place generally anymore, or they haven't been for a while. Um, so, yeah, I mean, it, it's really is about having everybody on the same page about your expectations, um, running that training, training again, you know, and, and I know, and I know, uh, from several employees perspectives that it's annoying having fishing training and try to make it fun. Um, but at, in the end of the day, there has to be some sort of training. Yeah, absolutely. It's like, Oh yeah, we're going to do this again. It's like, yeah, but the day it doesn't happen is, or the day it does happen, you'll, you'll be thankful. Right. Yeah. Well, ho- hopefully they, they, they won't even know. Oh, or that too. You know, <laughs> It, it should be so seamless and flawless that it's like it, you shouldn't even know that it, it was a real training thing. It was so simple and fun that hey, it was just it was just another day at the office, right? Or another day virtually at the office. Or they or they don't even know that, that there was an attack because they 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 didn't click on it. Yeah. You know, they, they handle it like <laughs> they handle it like a champ and it's like, oh yeah, right. okay, well, no problem. It's just so mm-hmm. very, very cool. Um just trying, I'm just quickly going over my notes here and making sure. Yeah. That, I mean, we went through a ton of information and, you know, some of this is really good stuff. Like even like just a refresher course, just for someone like myself that, I mean, I'm on the computer day in and day out and multiple devices synced together with, you know, even my computer and to my laptop, to my TV at home. That's a smart TV that connects all this internet of stuff with credit cards on file. And it's amazing mm-hmm. how much of it, it can, get overwhelming at times seeing how much technology is just part well, of yeah it. that that and um like any any area turn on the, the, the bluetooth on your phone and see how many devices there are there you know or how many wi-fi access points now and then then you wonder how many of those are actual real access points it's versus just, just pseudo access points like just fake. Or, you know i mean i i've, I've done engagements where you, you set up a, a an access point to look like one that that clients actually connect to or things like that. Um, and, and then so you, you go into a public space or something like that with a shared access point, or you go into a, a busy area with lots of Bluetooth, lots of access points. Um, 
I, I'm, I'm pretty much always suspect of everything though. <laughs> Almost like setting a trap and see what happens. Like mm-hmm. just it's or like fishing, right? Just multiple lines in the multiple lines in the water and see what 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 bites, what, what yeah. comes up. Mm-hmm. So great. Yeah, you have to check everything. Absolutely. Double if not triple. Cool. So yeah, I this was uh this was not meant to take too, too long of a, of a session, you know, about, okay. you know, 45 to 50 minutes. And, uh, I, I, I asked a lot of questions and I mean, you pretty much nailed most of them. And I, I really do appreciate, uh, you kind of taking the time to go through some of this stuff and mm-hmm. it's a constant, I feel like it's a constant evolving, uh, industry, with hackers just finding or, you know, they're looking for new tactics and new ways of trying, they're getting creative, right? They're adapting to their environment, no different of how everyone else is adapting. And they're just trying to figure out new ways and innovative ways to uh, attack, attack people's security when it comes to com- to computers, to anything else. So, mm-hmm. so thank you so much, yeah. Matt, for uh, thank you. being our, ho- uh, being our uh, first, our first startup grind uh, Marquette uh, speaker. There's going to be plenty more of these. And as we get uh, more individuals, we'd love to have you back for a panel discussion to talk more about this. I'm sure that we're, this is not going to be the end of cybersecurity. If anything, it's going to get more accelerated as the uh, days, months, and years go forward. So sure. anyone that wants to contact you, they can do it at uh, tactics.co. They can get your information there or they can... Um, they can email you, correct? Matt, That's correct. Matt, Matt at uh, attactics.co and they can have all their inquiries or anything else that they may uh, have for requiring your services. So perfect. Awesome. Well, thank, thank you. Th- yeah. Th- th- thanks a lot, Mike, for having me on here. Absolutely, man. Absolutely. So uh, have a great night and uh, we look forward to uh, having you again sometime soon. All right. Have a good night. Take care.